right, so when somebody calls me and says, hey, I need you to mitigate my 100-year-old farmhouse, I say, awesome, I can't wait. So 100-year-old farmhouses, the deal with those is you never know what you're going to get because they built them at a time when there was no code and they've expanded upon them uh, you know, as they needed to over the past 100 years. So they're always going to be chopped up. So we've got a, a challenging one today that I'm going to share with you. So I've already made my uh, main uh, penetration here. Got the pipe stubbed out. I'm going to thread these two needles. Got my uh, outside set up, ready to rock. I've mocked my fan up. We always need to do that. And I'll just uh, share with you a little bit of what we got going on. My name's Scott. I'm a radon mitigator in Virginia. I make videos for other radon mitigators and those looking to get into the business. If you're a homeowner, check out www.nrsb.org. That's National Radon Safety Board. Plug in your zip code. I'll put you in touch with a radon professional in your area. Beautiful Southwest Virginia. Not a bad environment to do your work in. This is a real estate transaction. And this home did not test high. As a matter of fact, that when the buyers, when the sellers bought it a few years ago, it came in at like 3.5, 3.6. Uh, and then when it was tested recently, it was around 4.7. And their buyers are making them uh, have me put this system in. So we just walked over the addition, and uh, that's a poured concrete slab. Uh, well, let me go ahead and share that with you here. And the rule of thumb is we try to drill about six inches below where we think the floor is. And uh, so we came in pretty, came in quite nicely right there. So we're gonna move quite a bit of air from this portion of the house. And we're gonna tie into the pipe here with this guy. And then I'm gonna reduce this pipe down to inch and a half, run it back here. And we're gonna encapsulate this uh, I guess it's essentially an old cellar um, dirt floor and so what really made me think hard on this house is this is a crawl space and there is no access to it the, uh, the folks that installed the HVAC system started in there and built it as they exited <laughs> this area so what we're doing is we're treating two-thirds of this house. Sometimes all you can do is all you can do. And uh, right here I discovered something. This was an old uh, bin for coal for way back when. And coal's radioactive. It could possibly be that all the radon in this house is coming from that. I don't have a Geiger counter and I'm not going to do a bunch of extensive testing because it's a real estate transaction and they need me to move along. So we're going to encapsulate this area, pull from this area, as well as that slab over there. This will get them over the hump. All right, I'm going to get to work. and We're getting ready to seal this pipe into this hole and connect it with the, uh, the main line. And I just wanted to share with you a little bit how I do that in a situation like this. I'm doing what I call building it up. Um, these, these center blocks have cavities in them and we don't want to lose any suction from this uh, this addition here of the house so when I seal the pipe in I want to seal it in and I don't want to lose anything in here and here and down here um, so I'm using it's, it's gutter guard it comes in rolls it's cheap um, plentiful and I also use it at the top of the system to keep leaves and squirrels or whatever from uh, possibly falling down into the system. But that's what I'm doing here. All right, I wanted to show you this before I go ahead and encapsulate this basement. Just a quick recap. Uh, we've got the main trunk line here. Um, mounted the manometer. I just smeared some adhesive behind the sticker and then screwed that in. Had to use a, you know, uh, an anchor. But that's, that's the best way to get the manometer here because there's no you know typically there's a 90 degree downturn and we don't have that here so uh, we got that sealed in nice and tight into this other area of the house and then sealed 
uh, you know, just did the best we could. Once upon a time, this was a stairwell. Get back up. Okay. And then uh, we converted to inch and a half off this T. And got that anchored as good as we can get. I mean, in the end, it's a radon system, not a jungle gym. So I hope it doesn't take too much abuse down here by kids or something. And then this is the big uh, once upon a time coal bin. Yep, that'd be coal right there. And so we're going to encapsulate it. And uh, my little fingers, my little straws are going to go whoop, just pull that mess right on out of here. Whoop. All right, it's late, I'm delirious, but we're going to keep pressing on. So here we are, it is the next day, and we have an encapsulated uh, cellar, which we pretty much treated like a crawl space. Lots of black plastic, it's neither fun nor easy, but it's not rocket science, and the objective is get the radon out. If it happens to help with moisture or pest control, terrific, no extra charge for that. This is essentially a, a cross space encapsulation in a space that you can stand in. Uh, you, you encounter stuff like this. This is a 1920s ice box that weighs far more than that actually. This furnace will be long gone before that ever will. Uh, if it does come out it's going to cost some money's back and a chiropractor will be set for a while treating that. Okay I'm going to show you how we ended up outside. Ta-da! Outside day two. That's how we ended up. The uh, HVAC units are certainly louder than the uh, radon system will ever be. We kicked it up that side. You'll see that it's it's actually strapped um, because this overhang is so uh, extends so far. I didn't, my ladder wasn't tall enough to catch this side to make it happen there. It felt a lot safer to work on that landing. And uh, I think in the long run, as you approach the house. It, it'll actually appear a little more camouflaged, a little harder for you to see that there's a radon system. In the end, nobody wants to see them or hear them. And uh, you notice the, uh, the the strapping I use is nice and neat. I'll show you a trick on how I do it. Okay, so I use a thin gauge uh, PVC for my exhaust. All right, so up to the fan is Schedule 40 4 inch pipe. And so just the difference, how I make that strap make those straps all right so this is this is three inch schedule 40 pipe right here all right you see the difference in the thickness and so if you look at this I guess you can sort of surmise how I make them and then I just uh, I use these right here to score where I'm gonna attach the strap we'll call it and um, and then I take that little screw out and I use a regular screw, what, however long it takes me, you know, two inches, two and a half inches, something like that, to, to get it to attach to the, you know, whatever surface I'm using. So uh, anyway, I hope you gained some value from this video. We'll catch you on the next one.